about you is great. You are great. You are great. Yes, you are.
the most high God. You are the most high Jehovah. You are the most high God. Jehovah. You are the most high Jehovah. You are the most high God. Jehovah Jireh. You are the most high Jehovah Rapha. You are the most high God. Jehovah Nisi. You are the most high. Concerns. Dance for him as you are dancing. Poverty is falling off. Sicknesses, infirmities are falling off. Dance your way to your testimony. We dance for you. We've been called for to show his excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. Say we are a chosen generation. We are a chosen generation. We've been called for to show his excellence. Oh, all I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. When he says I am. Where he says I'm at, I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at, I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm 
I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live the life of favor. Cause I know who I am. Hallelujah. Let's start it again from the beginning. We are a chosen generation. We've been called for to show his excellence. Oh, all I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. Where he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I know who God says I am. What he says I am. Where he says I'm at. I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Take a look at me. I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Can you see his glory? Cause I know who I am. Take a look at me. I'm a wonder. It doesn't matter what you see now. Can see his glory, cause I know who I am. Take it from our wonder. It doesn't matter what you see Can see his glory, cause I know who I am. Oh. It doesn't matter what you see Can see his glory, cause I know who I am. Say, I am holy, I am righteous, oh, I am so rich, I am beautiful. I'm walking in power, I'm walking in miracle, I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power, I'm walking in miracle. Shout hallelujah. If you know who you are, shout a loud hallelujah. Oh, I know who I am. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Just lift your voice and give him praise. Exalt him. You know who you are. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You are more than a conqueror. <laughs> you are undefeated. You are unstoppable. You cannot be destroyed. You know who you are. Lift your voice and give him praise and tell him, Father, I thank you. I thank you because you have given me power over principalities, over power Powers, uh, over wickedness in high places, uh, over spiritual wickedness, uh, rulers of darkness of this world. Uh, open your mouth and tell him, Father, I thank you. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am unstoppable. I am undestroyable. I cannot be destroyed. Uh, open your mouth, Makosha Katalia. Say, I am fortunate. I am fortunate. I'm happy. I'm progressive. I am fruitful. I am fruitful. I am multiply. I dominate. You are 
Congratulations. Tell your neighbor in this presence of God, something what you have praised have happened to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Immediately we are going into the congregational prayer for World Changers International Christian Center. Hallelujah. We are praying using Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. The Bible said in Isaiah 2, 2, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Kindly raise your right hand with me and shout, Father, Father establish and exalt World Changes International Christian Center on top of the mountains and above the hills and cause nations and people 
to flow into it daily in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to do it with everything within you. Because this could be your own opportunity for evangelism. This could be your own opportunity to get a reward. The Bible said on the last day there will be something called soul winner's crown. The crown for soul winners. This could be your own opportunity for calling in souls into the kingdom. The second prayer point is from Acts chapter 2 verse 47. The Bible said they are praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Raise your right hand of power again and say with me, Father add to world changers International Christian Center daily people that must be saved in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible said, if it is in this world alone that we have the hope of Jesus Christ, he said, you are of all men most miserable. So we are praying for people that will be saved at last. The Bible said, is he that held on to the end that will be saved. We are not people that draw back to perdition in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Verse, uh, the number three prayer point is taken from Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19. And the Bible said, they are out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voices of them that make merry and i will multiply them and they shall not be few i will also glorify them and they shall not be small raise your hand again of fire and say with me father cause the voice of thanksgiving not to cease among us daily multiply us so we are not few Glorify us so we are not small in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I take another prayer point from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. The Bible said, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Paul planted, Apollos watered, but it is God that gave the increase. Lift your right hand again with me. That right hand of fire. That same right hand that you will lift. To be able to pray your own prayer points. And they will receive express answers. Lift it with me and say, Oh God of increase. As our Paul plants. And our Paulus water. Give us supernatural increase. In this church. And in our lives, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So shall it be in Jesus' name. I take the last prayer point in this session in John, from John chapter 12, verse 32. The Bible says, And if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Lift your right hand again of power and say, Jesus Christ, as we lift you up daily, I'm not hearing your voice. I'm not hearing your voice. The winner's voice is always very loud because the shouting side is the winning side. I want to hear your voice loud and clear. Say, Jesus Christ, as we lift our voice, as we as we lift you up daily in this sanctuary, draw men to yourself. Lift your voice and say, Father, I thank you because all these prayers we do exceedingly. You will do abundantly. You will do above all that we could ask or think through the power of God that is at work in our lives. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, O oh Lord, because we know you are a God of performance. You are a God of performance. You are a God of performance. We thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I want you to lift your voice and make declaration into this week. Decree and declare this week the Lord will encounter me in an uncommon way. This week my testimony will be established. I don't want you to say it casually. It is with your mouth that you call your goodness and your mercy. The Bible said it is with your mouth. If you, with your voice you will be justified. And it's also with your voice that you will be condemned. Don't let condemnation come to you this week. Open your mouth and make declaration of good and great things. Decree and declare this is my week of joy. This is my week of advancement. Every target of the enemy against my life has failed 
you this week. Be deliberate and make and make and make prayers. Make prayers. Declare and declare this week I will have abundance. The favor of God is upon me. Everyone that will meet with me will favor me. In the name of Jesus, this grace is, is not my portion. Shame is not my portion. Lack is not my portion. Want is not my portion. Sickness, infirmity is not my portion. In the name of Jesus, decree and declare every demonic embargo is lifted from my life. Decree and declare every demonic load. The owners of the load will carry it. I refuse to carry demonic load. Demonic load is not my portion this week. In the name of Jesus, I am the Lord's free man. I am the Lord's free man. I am the Lord's free man. I move in liberty. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I move in liberty. I move in freedom. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to sing our anthem. Children, are you ready? Kindly come and let's sing our anthem. Thank you, Father.
stretch your hands and pray for our children, decree and declare that no ancestral force, no negative ancestral pattern will manifest in their life. In the name of Jesus, they are the blessed of the Lord. The blessing is superior to any form of curses. In the name of Jesus, that our children will manifest blessing. Our children will never be a source of concern to us, but they will forever remain a source of praise, a source of thanksgiving, a source of giving glory to God forever. These children, you will never become a concern. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will never have sleepless nights concerning you will forever have reasons to praise God reason to say how great thou art O God in the name of Jesus we declare and declare no ancestral negative pattern will manifest in your life we secure your today we secure your tomorrow we secure your forever under the blood of the lamb under the blood of Jesus we declare and declare you are different you will shine you will reign you will rule it is well with you our children in Jesus name we have prayed amen celebrate these children with a hand clap as they go to children's church celebrate them hallelujah look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor sit down never go down in jesus name Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. You know, praise Jesus is not, is not a greeting, but we've turned it to a greeting. Praise Jesus is we are praising him. Hallelujah. So let's praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you much. Glory be to God. I believe we are all excited to be in God's house because this is the best place to be in such a time. The house of God is full of every good thing, every wonderful thing, every, every awesome thing is in God's presence. Hallelujah. I'm privileged to remind us a few announcements um, so that we are all on the same page. By God's grace, we may prepare accordingly to be part of what God is doing every every moment and every day in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So this morning we started the Kiswahili service from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. It's a, it's a service that will be running in Kiswahili so that we may be a blessing to everybody they understand English or not. But that does not mean that uh, if you understand English, you should not connect. It's, it's part of our services and it's full of God's blessing. This morning as God's servant was opening it, it was very powerful. Kindly go online and, and just watch that service. It was full of power, full of grace. So henceforth from 7 to 9, we'll be having the Kiswahili service. Inform also. Uh, even people up country, let them know that there's a service that can bless them. Service that, that can speak to them in their language and they will understand. Um, and then let's also remember the inspirational service from 9 a.m. Let's endeavor to beat the blanket. You know, the blanket is sweetest between 5 a.m. and what time? 8 a.m. That's the sweetest time of the blanket. But if we, we endeavor to, to pursue God, if we endeavor to, to make an extra effort, I know we can make it. Let's, let's plan to be part of that service from 9 a.m. Let's learn deep principles of the word of God. Very practical principles from the word of God. And then the supernatural service that we are in, is I always encourage us, let's open up our hearts and let the word of God work in our lives. Let God bring out the best in us in the name of Jesus. This evening, being the second Sunday of the month, we'll be having the anointing service. Let's prepare accordingly. Let's 
to land to be part of the service and let the fresh oil of God work out the things in us. There are things that the oil, uh, I'm tempted to use the word only, but there, there is, is tremendous power when fresh oil comes upon us. There is tremendous power. There are things that happen in our lives when we get anointed with oil. So let's plan accordingly and be part of the service. In the name of Jesus. And then on Tuesday, let's remember the Holy Communion service. Let's, let's hook onto that covenant of health and strength. Good health and strength. When there are so many diseases. Um, nowadays we have Children as young as four years suffering, suffering from high blood pressure. And you wonder, what is this? What is this? Such diseases used to, to happen 60 and above. Now, children. So let's, let's, let's hook onto the solution of God. When there's a problem, God always has a solution for his children. And part of the solution to to sicknesses, diseases, and infirmities is the power in the Holy Communion. Let's honor that covenant and let that covenant bless our lives. Then the prayer riot on Thursday, let's join, let's be part of the service to pray. God will be glorified in our lives in the name of Jesus. Maybe we can take uh, one or two testimonies if you want to give God praise, if you want to give God thanks, if you want to acknowledge the doing of God. And this morning you're in God's house by show of hand. You want to testify before the church. Hallelujah. Anybody like that? Oh, I thought you were wearing your blazer. So I mean, we call it Stanford. Hallelujah. Sister Mweni. Okay, so beginning this coming week, from Tuesday to Sunday, Tuesday 13th to Sunday, we have, that will be the Holy Ghost Week, and the conference, or rather the theme for that Holy Ghost Week is activating quality growth in relationships. Activating quality growth in relationships. Um... Uh, professionals are beginning to tell us that the highest currency currently is in relationships. So God also endeavors that we have quality and edifying relationships. Let's connect from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to Sunday and learn and also tap the grace that God will be releasing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, so we had Deacon Stanford and Sister Mweni, uh, Mama Sam, Sister Abigail. Okay, so let, let's do in that order kindly. Thank you, Jesus. If Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Powerful to testify. The Bible says that, and they overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and by the word. The words of thanksgiving, words of praise, words of acknowledging that God has done it in my life. So let the constant for share for this testimony. Hallelujah. Praise, praise God. Um, I've come forth to give God praise. Uh, yesterday was my birthday. And I celebrate God for giving me another new year. Um, I'm really very grateful to God because uh, when I look at the month of October, it's very significant to me. 
because uh, in the month of October, God has lifted me to another level in ministry. But also, the month of October is my month of birthday. But I'm also looking forward to my anniversary this uh, month in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate the doing of God. Ah, even if it was the sub-chief, we, we wouldn't clap like that. We are thanking God for an extra year, anniversary loading, and also his ordination. Hallelujah. Sister Moeni. Praise God, church. I want to thank God seriously for helping me in my academic. I was defending my thesis not long ago. It was being accepting mid-July. And things went so easy than I expected because they approved me so easy than compared to if I would have defended it in person because I defended it in, for online. It took lesser minutes. So sometimes I could pretend but if they ask me a hard question I keep on saying come again, come again. So this <laughs> so they skip because it's really tough especially in the institution that I'm in. And I want to thank God because after the defense session, you, you call your colleagues and ask them, how has it gone? And it was very bad to come because someone would tell me they have been told to, go, to change the theories and come up with other theories or change the whole data analysis. And that will take you way back. But I want to thank God because up to date, every time I share my work with my supervisors, they tell me, correct this and this, proceed. Correct this and this, proceed. So I went ahead and took the, did the data collection, analyzed. It's, it's very hard. It helped me. And when I shared my work last week on Thursday, I received, I received a mail the second day, the following day, telling me good work. Pre prepare for defense too, because the defenses are based on, depending on your, on your department. So anytime from tomorrow, I'll be having the defense too. And that same God who helped me in defense one has been helping me in this one. And I want to thank him seriously because it is you people who prayed for me that I get a, a good supervisor and I, I can test and have a good supervisor. May God bless you. Hallelujah. May God perfect that, that good work in the name of Jesus. Academic grace that flows here, may that same grace follow her. In the name of Jesus, we give God praise. Mama Sam. Let's give God praise. God. Praise God. I swear to give thanks because since March, I'm happy with this. I couldn't even carry anything. This I try to think maybe this maybe I've carried many things. I couldn't even sleep on it. If I turned and slept on this side, I would wake up. That is since March. And uh, gradually, as we have been praying, uh, the heart has been getting better and better. I didn't go to the hospital. <laughs> you know why? You can guess why I didn't want to go to the hospital during this time. And I rubbed it prayed, but right now I, I couldn't even do this with this heart. Whatever I'm doing right now, it was very hard to keep my dresses. Uh, Susan can attest to that even when I came. I couldn't do anything so we had to rub it, but right now I can do everything as anything. <laughs> we give God all the glory and thank you for your prayers. Because when we are told to pray, to pray for one another, you don't know what someone is going through. And uh, you can believe for mothers, when you're sick, you think it's just a small thing. But I think the mothers here can attest to that. That you can be very sick, you can be, be very unwell, having a lot of pain, but you're thinking, let me just leave it. But now, I'm doing this. Yeah. We give glory to God. Thank you. We give God praise. Hallelujah. You know, many people, something starts small. And then the other day you hear the thing has escalated. But we give God praise. That little seed that the devil was trying to plant was consumed. And it will never return in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. We give God praise. Praise God, church. Praise God again. I'm here to give God all the glory. Exactly two weeks ago, I had gone to Eldoret. That is uh, my village. And uh, we had a function. We had started building a house of God there. And uh, last, the last two weeks ago, we had a fundraiser. And I really want to thank God because uh, it went on very well. The attendance was not big. Maybe the number was like this. But uh, people really gave generously. God really touched the heart of people. And all the guests who were in the card, they came. So we didn't have any apologies. They came and they gave. And our target was 500,000. So it was looking like maybe because the number is not so much, maybe we won't attend our target. But God surprised that we surpassed our target and the work is going on. And I'm here to give God all the glory and to thank everybody who supported us, including Apostle here. We thank God. Hallelujah. We give God praise. They say that giving is by heart, not by wealth. You can see uh, a function full of heavy men, but then the offering can only, not the offering, the giving and the fundraising can only cater for the food. I would give God praise. The Sister Charity, who knows, let's give God praise. Father, we thank you. Praise the Lord, Church. I want to thank God for establishment. A um, few years ago, we moved on to our home in Kamuli. It was a bit hostile because we did not have many amenities. We did not have electricity. We did not have water. But God has been faithful. Um, we now have everything, including water, in our own home. We give all the glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God. Glory be to God. Uh, we give God praise. They don't know what a caretaker is, I think. And we give God praise. I know many of us are desiring to enter that level. And God will grant us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I also have a testimony. Um, for some time, we, we had a, a facility with the bank. And then... Uh, late, late last year, we made up our mind that let's, let's clear everything. So we began to stretch our faith, stretch our faith. And little by little, we, we were gathering. Um, last, last Saturday, we, we managed to, to have at least the lump sum. But uh, what dawned on me is that we, we don't understand the power of debt. But the events that transpired made me know that there's something we've never known about debt. Because we left the house very well. And when we got to survey, uh, I saw smoke from nowhere fill the car. And this is something that has not happened for a long time. And I was wondering, what is this? As I was stopping, I saw fire oozing out of the bonnet. I had the two children. I had my wife inside the car. Um, so we stopped immediately, switched off the car, gotten the two children out. As I was doing that, um, I would say, God sent people. Because, uh, you know, at, during, during that a situation, you might not know what to do. But people, people that were driving other cars, number one, somebody was giving them instruction, disconnect the battery, one, uh, two, fire extinguisher, extinguishers filled the place, and then somebody was also pouring soil. Um, what I want to give God praise for is... Only the dipstick of the oil was burned. What happened is that a little pipe was spraying ATF, the transmission fluid. And you know the car is getting hot. What should happen is smoke, not fire. So that we could not understand. 
but we thank God because nothing was damaged, the engine is intact. Only the dipstick, the plastic part of the dipstick, only that was bad. And somebody came and told me, you, you worship, the God you worship, keep worshipping him. Because he said, that was the end of that car. But we give God praise. We give God praise. That the car is intact and all is well. But when I knew it was the devil, I told my wife, leave me here. Go finish the business that we had. And uh, that dawned on me that that is a powerful thing that the devil wants to keep people in. And I give God praise. Um, that's just like two days later. They were cooking in the house and the pressure cooker was on. The pressure cooker flew out of wherever it was and went to land somewhere. And I was wondering, what is, what is this? One simple thing with multiple reactions. But what I want to thank God for is nothing was destroyed. There was nobody in that kitchen. And it was just the anger of the devil. But God is faithful. Hallelujah. We give God praise in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your healing. We thank you for helping us academically. We thank you for making us landlords and establishing us. We thank you for touching the heart of men to be destiny helpers. We thank you for preservation. We thank you for shaming the devil and thwarting all his agendas. We give you praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Choir, kindly. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to minister through a song that says, Our God is a faithful God. He can never fail. He can never change. And what he says, he will do in Jesus' name. Be Amen. blessed as we minister. Amen. You are who you are yesterday, today and forevermore. What you say is what you do. You never change, you never fail. You're faithful to the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. Change. You are faithful. 
Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Choir, thank you for that ministration. That's a ministration. Hallelujah. All right. Um, where is uh, Mrs. Mwagangi? I think I saw her in church. Is she around there? Madam, let me say, why are you upset? Uh -huh. Now, um, I want us to appreciate this woman for, I made up my mind I was going to do this, instead of giving her change or whatever. When we came here, there was no place to keep our things. We brought all our stuff from Ngara. We rented an apartment to keep our speakers and all that, but all the metals, the iron, the other things, are kept in a house opposite. They kept it for us. All the wood that we used to have in those days were kept in their house. And they took care of it until we began to build. Until we built and began to now use those materials and collected everything. Please appreciate that woman for us. Um, it, it, when I looked at it, it's, I prefer her serve, you know, being our neighbor, being part of us, than give her change and dismiss her. What she did to me was humanitarian, not a transaction of, for money. So a few times, I'm, I'm not giving you a dime. Enter church so that you are blessed. I want us to extend a hand of fellowship to her. Whenever you come around, check her. She lives just next door there. Say hello to her. She went to up country. She just returned back. Husband. So say hello to them. Let's relate with them. Both of us. We are part of this family because what she did is just like a family. It's not that um, she charged us and said, now you keep your stuff here, you pay me 500 shillings per week or per month. She kept it there until we to use it. So God bless you, ma. Um, I declare you blessed, favored of God. Because you honor the church, may God honor you. You know, then I used to tell you, forget about money. This church is bigger than what you're seeing. And you say, okay, sir, okay, sir, and you go away. You t I tell you, don't worry yourself. Just be watching what is going on. And you are seeing little by little. What you are seeing is a glimpse of the iceberg. We are going somewhere. May you be part of those that will enjoy the good things that will be happening here in the name of Jesus Christ. Since you made up your mind to be part, I didn't even know you were back. But you came to fellowship with us. May God honor you and give you your heart desires in Jesus' name. What money cannot buy in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen for her. Hallelujah. Now, I'm looking forward to us leaving this tent and using the, uh, the, the building that we just put up there so that they can put the roof here. Yesterday and two days ago, rain fell. And the whole place was is with water. We have to be covering this and covering that and all that, you know, because the roof is leaking. But we know that the Almighty God that has helped us to build that place up to that level will help us to roof this place and do all the and all the additions that are supposed to be there in Jesus' name. Um, after the service, we'll go into the building. You will discover that we've gone a bit far. We've done all the tiles. We fixed the doors. Um, if not that, the they call them fundis. Those of you online, fundis in Kenya are workmen. The brick players and those. So, if not that they didn't know how to finalize the doors, that I had to go and get go to the company that we bought the doors from to come and start fixing the ones that we bought, they would have finished because I was believing that by this Sunday we should move into that building so that this week they will pull down the tent that arranging. But after the service, we're going to go into the building there, bless it, and prepare ourselves to start using the place for services as we remove this tent roof the church in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. So after the service, we'll do that. All right, let's get to God's word this afternoon. Um, I'll be teaching on the topic, the best answer to give your enemies and those who hate you. I think somebody needs to know the best answer to give your enemy. Am I correct? The best answer to give your enemy and those who hate you. There's an answer that you can give them that will suffice. An answer that you can give your enemy and those who hate you that will solve a lot of problems. I'll show you the answers. I'll 
show you the answers. You can choose a combination of them or give all of the answers. There are eight of them. Answers you can give to your enemy and those who hate you. Father, speak to us. Take over right now. Glorify your name, Jesus. I receive unction and utterance and grace to articulate your word. Let everyone understand your word. And let your word move with power. Let your children be highly inspired in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let them hear directly from you because this is from you. Blessed be God forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go. Genesis chapter number 37, verse 3 to 11. Genesis chapter number 37, verse 3 to 11. The Bible says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was a son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. They were speaking rudely to him. The Bible says in verse number 5, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Verse number 6, And he said unto them, Here I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field. And lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaf stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Verse number 10, And he told it to his father and his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Verse 11, and his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. Blessed be the reading, the hearing, and the doing of God's word. There is nobody on earth that does not have enemies. There is nobody on earth that does not have enemies. Everyone, sometime in his or her life, would have encountered real enemies. People that will tell you that you are your enemies. People that will face you and point to your face and you know this one is not joking with you. At some point in your life, you have such persons. It gets to a level that some people will keep manifesting as enemies until you mark them for a long time. And you begin to wonder, what did I do? In fact, one of the marvelous things about enemies is that sometimes you might not do anything to offend the person. The person just hates you. Why did the brothers of Joseph hate Joseph? Why are they angry with him? Why were they not happy with him? What was the offense of Joseph? The Bible says to us, Joseph was loved by his father. His father made him coat of many colors. They are old enough to get coat of eh, overcolor, overcolored coat. But they were just angry with this guy. Many times, people, are, people hate you and become your enemy just because of your destiny. Your destiny can anger someone. You need to understand that destiny sizes. Destiny have different sizes. Many times when people perceive that your destiny is too heavy or too serious, they can hate you. They can just mark you. When somebody begins to smell that there's something strange about this person's destiny, they can decide to hate you. You may not commit any offense. You did not steal. You did not cheat. You did nothing wrong. But somebody don't just like your person. Listen, God created us differently. There are those who are quiet. There are those who are very aggressive. There are those who are extroverts. There are those who are introverts. But many times, people hate you for your personality. They don't just like your personality. Because this one is too extroverted. What with him? Every time they talk, he's always raising up his hand. Can't you just keep quiet and put down your hands? <laughs> While some, they hate you because you are too quiet. You are too slow for them. Ah, no matter what you say, he's quiet. Even when you say he's a mumu, you say amen. 
<laughs> so how come? Ah, he not he doesn't even get angry. Even when you push him, he doesn't push you back. For, 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 for what? And people just hate you for it. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's the beginning of hatred. But what is the best answer you give to people who hate you? Many of them can go out of their way to make life uncomfortable for you. The Bible says to us, they began to talk to Joseph very rudely. They were not talking to him peaceably. They were talking to him aggressively and violently. When he told them, shut up! When he raised up, he said, you, I'm, are you okay? He really put on his hand. <laughs> they were harassing him. They were not allowing, even when he did good things, it, it made no sense to them. But God gave Joseph an answer. May God give you an answer. To always give to those who hate you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, I have a kind of personality that people can easily hate. Oh my God. I've been in school, primary school, secondary school, university, university, master's degree, PhD. I have preached in 42 countries. I've traveled far and wide. I have met people. Naturally, sometimes when you meet me at first, you feel like hating me. Why? Because I have an aggressive personality. When I show up, you will know I'm dominant. I will tell you that's the way it should be now. I don't care who you are, no matter your anger. I'll tell you that's the way it will be. Immediately, and I'll stand, and it will be so. I, and people are wondering, who is this guy? Ah, he's very abrasive. He comes vehemently. He comes, ah, who is he? After a while, when you know who I am, you will like me by force. <laughs> so I've met enemies, plenty. Many enemies, first of all, before they become friends. That's my experience. Many people first connect as an enemy. They mark me first as an enemy. Later, we now become very good friends. <laughs> I've seen that around the world. Now, what is the answer, the best answer you can give to your enemy? Can I hit the hammer on the nail? Number one, the first answer you give to your enemy when they show you hatred and wickedness is, have a great dream. So number one, to enemies, is I want this microphone to be working. I want to preach. The dead, make sure I'm preaching. If it's not going to work well, give me the other head mic. But I want, that's why I'm using this one. Please make that decision in less than a split second. Either I use the head one or I continue with this. A decision less than a split second so that I can proceed further. I don't want any distraction. Number one is what? Have a great dream or a great vision. When you have a great dream or a great vision, you can silence your enemy with your great dream. No matter who is angry with you, does not matter. No matter who does not like you, does not matter. If you want to give them an hate, suffer not. You want to give them an answer for not liking you. The best answer, number one, is have a great dream. Because I discovered that only results silences insults. There are some people that are insulting you, insulting you. When your dream shows up, uh, they will change the insult. <laughs> have a great dream. The Bible made us understand that they were insulting this guy called Joseph. Attacking him. Not speaking to him peaceably. But one day, the guy woke up and said, I have a dream. And they said, what is your dream? He said, in my dream, I saw us binding sheep in the farm. We were gathering like firewood or grasses or food. While we were gathering it, suddenly, everybody's food rose up. The grasses were no longer lying on the floor. The one I tied stood up. The one you guys tied together for yourself stood up. And then yours began to bow to mine. Ah! The hatred increased. <laughs> Have a great dream. That is the first answer you give to your enemies and to those who hate you. I want to show you something very strange. When you appear with a great dream, no matter who hates you, the person becomes afraid of you. Do you know at some point they were no longer hating him? They began to envy him. Hatred turned to envy because of a dream. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me hit the hammer on the day number two. If they continue hating you after you present a great dream, 
What do you do next? Upgrade your dream to another level. Upgrade. Upgrade your great dream to a higher level. The Bible says to us when he told them he had a dream, it was that dream that made them give him audience. Before that time, they were not giving him audience. When he told them, shut up. Who is talking and who wants to talk? Who is your mate here? They were not allowing him to talk. So when he said, I have a dream, they kept quiet. They wanted to hear the dream. When he shared the dream with them, the hatred increased. How did Joseph answer them? He did not answer them rudely or attack them. What he did was he had an upgraded dream. <laughs> when your dream caused trouble for you, what do you do? Upgrade the dream. Dream higher dreams. The Bible says to us, Joseph had a greater dream than the one they had before. He said, I have another dream more. They said, uh -huh, uh -huh. what is the dream? He said, this time around, it was not grasses bowing to me. It is the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing to me. Abba. At, so, at that point, they were no longer hating him. They were now envious of him. How we wish we were like this guy. Ah, this guy would be great. Wow, how we wish we were like him. They were now wishing they were him. That's envy. Upgrade your dream. Upgrade your dream. Let there be an upgrade to your dream. Upgrade your dream. Upgrade your dream. Number three. What is the third answer you give to your enemy? Answer number three. Number one is have a dream. If the hatred continues, upgrade your dream. Number three is serve your enemies. Serve them. Start giving them food. Start helping them. Start affecting them. That's an answer. That answer is a very heavy answer. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 37, verse 13 to 14, And Israel said unto Joseph, do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem. Come, and I will send thee unto them. And, and, and he said unto him, Here am I. And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flock, and bring me word again. So he sent him out to the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. They sent him to go and check his enemies, to go and serve them, to go and know whether they are fine. Do the same. The third answer you give to enemies, serve them. Take care of them a sign that you'll be great. If you cannot take care of your enemies, it's a sign that you'll be very poor. In fact, it's a sign that you accepted poverty. When the devil knocked it out to give you some poverty, you collected it. Serve your enemy to show that you'll be great. See, when you are serving others, it's a sign that you have more than enough to give them. The Bible says again in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 17 to 20, this was David and his brothers who hated him. And Jesus said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this patch corn and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to thy brethren, and carry these ten cheese unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning, and left the ship with the keeper, and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to battle and shouted for the battle. He took the food to go and give his brothers at the battle front when they hated him. Remember, he had an encounter with his senior brother there. And that one asked him, why are you here? Who is your mate? Can't you see that it is elders forum? <laughs> and that was, it was in the same place David became an elder. Serve them. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verse number 20 to 21, serve your enemy. He says in Romans 12, 20 to 21, he says, Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. When your enemy is hungry, gather food and feed him. Give him food to eat, let him eat. When your enemy starts to give them drink, they may collect it and throw it away. Give them again. They may carry the food and drop it, does mean give them another one. They'll soon be over hungry. Okay, they give them. It's a sign that God will bless you with more. So the third answer you give to your enemy is serve them. Serve them by feeding them. All right, let's go. Number four, the fourth answer you give to your enemies and those who hate you. Answer number four is pay the price for your dream to come true. Start paying the price. Don't let them distract you. Don't let them distract you and stop you from your dream. 
start paying the price to make the dream come true. Start. Begin to pay the price that is required for your dream to come true. Don't go and start saying, ah, I didn't hear them. Oh, they are the ones who hated me. I don't know why they are attacking me. Leave them alone. Pay the price. Let your dream come true. Pay the price. Every dream has a price. If you must be great in this world, there's a price that you must pay. If you already knew that these are enemies, there's no need for you to be tearing your Christmas cloth, trying to please them. Serve them. Give them what you can. If they throw it away, fine. If they eat it, okay. By the grace of God, you surely succeed. Therefore, go and begin to pay the price for your destiny to become great. In Genesis 37, verse number 23 to 24, and it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, and his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Pass through the pit of life. Pay the price for your greatness to manifest. Pay the price. Don't allow the intimidation of your enemy make you die in the pit. Come out of the pit. Again in Genesis 37, verse 26 to 28, And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it that we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let, our, let not our hands be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. And there passed by Midianite merchantmen, and they drew and lifted Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they bought Joseph into Egypt. Can you imagine? Pay the price of slavery. Pay the price of entering the pit that has no water. Pay the price of suffering so you can become great. Don't allow whatever the enemy thinks about you to hold you back from succeeding. Pay the price. When we came to this area, and, and the, uh, uh, one of our neighbors here began to do drag up and down. And then the foreman and others began to talk to me. I told them, excuse me, please. I have not finished cultivating the land God gave us. And I'm thinking of another person's own. Please stop that nonsense. Can we fix this land first and manifest here fully? What are we looking for? Car park. Over parking will be worrying us. So relax. When it is time, everybody will donate in their land as offering. So go down. Let us build this place first and manifest. And we started. They, they will bring their sins. Don't bring distraction to me. Whatever they've said, is them. They, they have their mouth. They can see anything. But let me fix what I'm here for. And I started attacking the building, attacking the building, adding value everywhere. See, excuse me, sir. It's better for you to use all the energy that you are used to fight your enemy to pay the price for greatness. Greatness can silence your enemy. So why are you sweating up and down? By the time things began to change, I was here one day when one man came and said he wanted to see me. He was outside the gate for one hour, waiting for me in the sun. When they opened the gate after the service, he entered into the church. I said he wanted to see me. Why do you want to see me? He said, hey, he wants me to buy his house. He said they told him to sell his house. They, the bank wanted to auction his house. And when he looked, he prayed. When I got to his house, he's a Christian. He said he prayed. And something told him, if you must lose this house, lose it into the hands of that pastor. And he came to meet me. And then he said, he said, we heard what happened. Some of the people that were fighting the church. He said, and they fenced the church and they put my party everywhere. He said, we already know that the place they put my party, the church will soon take over that place. So we already know. He was telling me, I was looking at him. Listen carefully. When you start growing and becoming great, even blind eyes can see that the people fighting are only wasting their time. Excuse me, sir. Pay the price. Concentrate on your destiny. Pay the price for your dream to be fulfilled. And don't get distracted about anybody fighting you. About anybody saying anything. Focus on your dream. Pay the price. You will be put you in the pit. Come out of the pit. Don't die in the pit. They sold you as a slave. Make sure you shine as a slave. The Bible says in Genesis 37 verse 36, the Midianites took him to, to Egypt and sold him to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh. They did not know they were transporting him to his destiny. Whatever your enemy does, will work together for your good. Pay the price. Whatever they will do against you, will work together for your good. Pay the price. Be focused. And focus on the church. Focus on what I'm doing. Kept on preaching. And little by little, everybody began to come and say, Hello, sir. Hey, we are joining you. Hello, sir. We are with you, sir. Anything, sir. Call us, sir. And so on and so forth. Number five, the fifth answer you give to your enemies and those who hate you is take care of what does not belong to you at every opportunity. Take care of what does not belong to 
you at every opportunity you have. Every opportunity you have, take care of what does not. That is an answer, sir. You are answering your enemy. Keep doing good. Keep doing good everywhere you go to. At every opportunity, do good to human beings. Do good to humanity. The Bible says in Genesis 39, from verse 1 to 6, it says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him out of the hand of the Ishmaelites, which are brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him. Joseph was serving somebody else. And he served him. And he made him, and he made him oversee over his house. And all that he had, he put it to his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he made him oversee over, or over his house. And over all that he had. That the Lord blessed the Egyptians out for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand. And he knew that all he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Excuse me, sir and ma. Take care of what does not belong to you. You are slapping your enemies, sir. No matter how they are pushing you, don't begin to destroy other people's stuff. No matter what they are doing to you, don't now begin to release your aggression on somebody who did not offend you. Don't now go and begin to destroy other people's property and say, yeah, but all of them are fighting me. Yeah, not all of them are fighting you. Do good to others because you are preparing for greatness. You are preparing for greatness. The Bible says in Luke 16 verse 12, Luke chapter number 16 verse number 12, the Bible says, and, it, and if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? If you have not been faithful in that which belongs to somebody else, who will give you your own? Nobody will give you your own. It is when you become faithful in another man's property that God will give you your own. I remember when we left YMCA, when the Jesus out of YMCA, and we were looking for a place to stay. And when we moved there, they chased us. We moved to another place, they chased us. Until finally we came to Ngara. When we got to Ngara, I remember I keep telling you, my wife said to me, why don't we pray and ask God for our own land? I said, it's not yet time. She said, how did you know? Time belongs to God. Why don't you ask God first? I said, I've asked him already. It's not yet time. I told her, we are supposed to be in somebody else's property and take care of what does not belong to us so God can give us our own. She said, eh, but God can give us our own now. I said, ma, there is something called the law of timing. Relax. When it is time, I will tell you, I'm the pastor here. You are following me. To follow me, I'm not leading you astray. I looked at her and said, have I ever led you astray? She said, no. She said, no. Keep quiet. Follow me. For five years, we were there. Paying rent in a serious way. Sometimes, she would remind me, see, see the way? We don't have rent to pay. You are announcing now, eh? we need 150000 extra. Eh? How many will you give? Eh? Dennis, eh? how much? Eh? Eva. And some people frown their face. They were looking at me with bad eyes like this. And she would tell me, you see now, people are not happy. Every time, we are paying rent, we are paying rent. I said to her, leave it. We need to take care of another person's compound before God gives us our own. And when God gives us our own, he will bless us very speedily because we took care of what does not belong to us. We kept on painting the place. We kept on sweeping the place. We kept on making the place good. When the landlord came, he said, ah, ah, you have brought life to my compound. There's life in this place now. Ah, this place was empty for five years. Pastor, you can stay for extra one more year. You can stay for as long as until God gives you land. Now, Pastor, make sure you don't enter the hands of corn men. Make sure you get a land that has paper, and the paper is genuine. That's what the landlord began to advise me. When we were living there, he was one who gave us all this method that we use for friends and all that up until now. Are you understanding me? He said to me, when you get to the land and you want to do harambe, call me. I told him, we don't do harambe. We release our faith and God bless us to build. We don't do Arambi in this church. Arambi is an Indian word which means praise Ampi. Ampi is a God in India. Is that God that has mouth like elephant and is fat like a human being. So I don't do Arambi. I will never harass Ampi. For what? I will, I will praise God. Why will I be harassing Ampi? Ampi, relax. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I told him, what does see, so see. Let me leave the matter alone. I'm not going to do a rampage. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you following me, somebody? When you take your word does not belong to you, God will give you your own. Leave your enemy alone. Let them relax. You are coming. You are coming. You are coming. Tell them to relax. Enemy, take seat. I'm coming. When I show up, you will vanish, sir. 
There's no need for you to go and be telling your kids. I say, hey, hey, where, where? Go Japa, hey, you, you see your grandfather. Said, There's no need for all those things. Prepare your way to succeed. Oh, glory to God. Number six. The sixth answer you give to your enemy is do not sell yourself short in the day of adversity because after adversity comes prosperity. Don't sell yourself short because enemies are attacking you. Many times because of demonic attacks and human attacks, some of us sell ourselves short. We now begin to accept all kinds of things. You now begin to allow all kinds of things happen to you. Some people begin to fall into sin, fall into fornication, fall into adultery. Some will begin to compromise. Don't sell yourself short because of demonic attack. No matter how difficult the situation is, it will soon ease out. No condition is permanent. That is why one of the most powerful words in the Bible is, it shall come to pass. And it came to pass. It's a powerful word. That you always see it in the Bible. Nearly all books of the Bible have that. It shall come to pass. Or, and it came to pass. What does it mean? It came and passed. It did not stay. There is nothing like, and it shall come to stay. Have you read that in your Bible before? And you saw, and it shall come to stay. Nothing came to stay, sir. Everything came to do what? Pass. Last Saturday, uh, so, some people visited us from, uh, from Addis Ababa. And somebody needed to be buried. And they came to tell me. And said I should visit the place. I said, all right. So I got to um, Langata Cemetery. After a long time, I used to pass the road. I've not entered there fully yet. The first time I entered was last Saturday. When I entered, I saw a lot of burial place, places where people were buried. I saw some places, they even built it and it has a roof. I saw some places, they didn't have any roof. I saw some places, there's no plaster. You have forgot some people somewhere. So everybody, but they're all buried in the ground. It is a burial ground. Everybody were all buried. Whether they plastered your own and put marble or not, you're inside the ground. <laughs> then I looked around and I saw a lot of pictures. I saw one man wearing a suit, looking very solid, and he was buried there. I saw another lady looking very old. In her picture, and she was buried there. Then I said to myself, Do you know I don't know what these guys is? But they manifested in this Kenya at some point. They were in this Kenya at some point. But now, I don't know them. I'm in Kenya now, but I don't know them. I never met them. Are you understanding me? Some people that met them have forgotten that they met them. Some of them have even died. And that's the end. There comes a generation that will forget you. So, why must you sell yourself short? Why must you betray your life? Why must you hand over yourself to the devil? Why must you allow the devil now take over? See, very soon, time will pass. Everything came to pass away. Don't allow the devil to take over your life. No condition is permanent. There was a time when I was a boy. I remember when I was a boy. When I used to play up and down, I was very happy to be a boy. But after a while, I discovered I'm, I'm no more a boy, man. I had grown up. I'm telling you. And I wanted to marry. And the people were calling me and saying, come, come, come. Hey, are, are you engaged? There was a time, no, I can't say, I mean, in fact, if I even said hello to a girl, I can't tell somebody I did that. But at, after I was, they called me and said, come, come, come. Are you okay? Why haven't you married? Ah, hey. You see now? When I was a boy, I had passed. When I got married, everyone said, yeah, it's okay. He's supposed to have married a long time ago. Hey, thank God he's now married. Have you seen it? Then I began to give birth to children. And my children began to, in fact, at first when I had the baby, it was looking awkward. I don't know whether it, it happened to some of you. It was looking awkward somehow. So I was carrying my baby. Wonderful. I was calculating, wow. I'm telling you because I, I was a boy before. Now, I'm not carrying babies. And then the guy would call me, Dad, I say, wonderful. Me, no. Wow. Wonderful. Now I'm telling you the truth. That was the level. Then after a while, my sons now began to grow tall. And they are now following me up and down. And they are able to do things around me. I say, wonderful. Can you imagine how life is? When I looked at the mirror, I saw myself having gray hairs. Eh? At what level? Cha. So why should you sell yourself short? Okay, the camera is trying to pick Brother Ken. See, so that Brother Ken can look younger than me. Am I correct? Ah, it's a lie. It's a lie. He only shaved his hair so that he can take his <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. If I shave my hair now, you think I'm 16 years old. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> if I shave it completely, you think I'm just 13 years old. I am not old. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't sell yourself short. If you sell yourself short, your enemies have defeated you. You are a fool. When they are attacking you, don't sell yourself short. Keep your dignity intact. Keep your respect intact. Even when you don't have money. Even when you are poor. When we started this project, I didn't have a lot. I didn't have money to build this place. I was just managing myself, snatching. We rented some wood and we used it to one of the, the, the ground floor. Part of the ground floor. We didn't have money to buy wood for ourselves. So we rented wood. And then the, one of the people that rented the wood from came to harass me to pay 5,000 shillings or 6,000 shillings. And I was negotiating with the person. I said, no. I she said, I should pay 7,000. So I said, no, I'll pay 5,000. We were negotiating. And suddenly she got angry with me and looked at me in the face. I said, I will never help this church again. So I said, stop that. I lifted my voice and tuned it. I have that voice. Too. And I said, quiet! For the rest of your life, look at this church. You will, this church will, you will forever need the help of this church. This church will not need your help. Forever saying that, you are putting a curse on yourself. Look at the church well. You're on the floor now. Very soon you discover what I'm saying is true. That you will forever need the help of this church. This church will never need your help. When I said it the third time, she apologized. She said, sorry, sir. Very sorry, sir. It's okay, sir. Uh -huh, sir. Uh, pay 5,000. So I gave her the 5,000. That forever stopped. From that day forward, I see her on the street. She doesn't talk to me anyhow. Forever she will need the help of this church. Where's the church? Don't come and attack church because of 1,000 shillings. What's wrong with you? Something wrong with you? I knew who I'm, I, I was. How could you come here and be talking to me? Because you, you borrowed us wood. <laughs> and all of us will leave this wood on it and go away and go to the other side. So why are we fighting for wood? After that time, we have bought wood worth hundreds of thousands to build this place. Hundreds of thousands of wood have gone into this place. Some of them are wasting away here and there. Some don't even come to pick leftover wood to go and cook. What more than five or ten thousand? Are you understanding me? Don't sell yourself short. Don't sell yourself short in the day of adversity. When things are tough for you, if you sell yourself short, your enemies have defeated you. You are a foolish man. You are gone. Don't sell yourself short in the days of adversity. The Bible says in Genesis 39, verse 11, it says, And it came to pass about that time that Joseph went to the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there within. And she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when he saw that they had left the garment. All of you know the story. Joseph went to prison for this. It's better to go to prison than to sell yourself short. It's better, sir. It's better to go to jail. Somebody one day was doing an evil. He was doing something very wrong in the company. And I corrected him. He said, stop that. You know what you're doing is wrong? He said, but my company told me to do it. I said, but morally speaking, it is wrong. He said, I know, but I'm doing my job because I need food on my table. So I looked and said, you are a fool. Okay? I said, I repeat, you are a mega fool. You know it is wrong and you are doing it because you want food on your table. Why don't you allow? He said, but they will sack me. I said, better for you to be sacked than for you to be doing this wicked job. You will not last on earth. You only get salary for this one, two, three months, five months. After a while, you'll be a wasted investment. Say, Pastor, take it easy. You are very hard on me. No, no, I'm not hard. I'm telling you the truth. I may never meet you again. So that that word can be ringing in your spirit for the rest of your life. So that you can correct your path. Because you have taken a wrong route. You have sold your destiny. It may be a test that God tested you. Whether you are going to be faithful or not. But you have shown that you are a wicked man. You don't want to be blessed. That's why you are joining the company to do wickedness to humanity. Better don't join them. See, on earth, the earth was so full and corrupt. Only Noah and his family did the right thing. And they were the only righteous people on earth. So I don't care whether you are the only one person. Stand your grounds. Don't sell your bad fight. Don't sell your bad fight. Don't betray God. Joseph went to prison for doing the right thing. He went to prison. One government official came here and was talking to me. I was talking to him. He told me about bribery. And I told him, you, stand up. Who do you think you are? You are telling me to give you bribe? He apologized immediately. What nonsense is that? You think I'm afraid of you? Ah, he said, sir, you are, you are very tough. I said, I'm not tough. But you said I should bribe. <laughs> he said, no, no, I will just advise you. Don't advise me that way again. 
I'm the one to advise you. I'm the pastor here. And the chapter closed. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? Imagine if I compromised. I will start paying a ransom for the rest of my life. Two of us. But they will come on Sunday during service. They will come and disturb me so I can pay another ransom. They will come. They will block the gate. And put. Bring, if they even hire soldiers that are not working. They will come and bring some soldiers that are supposed to be sleeping in the house. They will come and harass me. <laughs> but I stood my ground. Don't sell yourself short. Don't fall into sin and think that is the way out. Everybody is doing it. Everybody is compromising. Everybody is stealing. Eh, let me just follow. Listen, the voice of the crowd is not the voice of God. You did not hear me. I repeat. The voice of the crowd is not the voice of God. Many times the crowd can go astray. Remember the whole world went astray. Only Noah and his family were righteous. Forget it. The voice of the crowd is not the voice of God. They say the voice of the people is, the voice, is a lie. Many times the people can tell lies. <laughs> the voice of God is the voice of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't sell yourself short. Mm -hmm. Two more points. Number seven. The seventh thing you do to silence your enemy. The answer. The best answer you can give to your enemy is prepare for your own time and chance. Seriously. While your enemies are attacking you, prepare for your own time and your chance. Seriously. Start preparing. While they are attacking you, be preparing yourself. While they are hitting you, be preparing yourself. While they are insulting you, don't care about the insult. Be preparing yourself. I have shown that to you guys by example. No matter what you talk, I'll be looking at you. I know where I'm going to. Paul my says, sir, the next level of stone, they are putting it there. You are insulting me. You are only making noise. You say nonsense, oh, you wallow more. It doesn't move me. I, I'm, not, I'm not building on your land. I'm putting in my job. You will keep meeting me, getting better. Prepare for your time and chance. Because one day your time will come. Your chance will open up. If you have been distracted by your enemy and you want to come back, be too late. You have lost the opportunity. Remember, I told the pastor, Debo, he said opportunity is a strange man. That he has plenty of hair in his front and is bald at the back. So when you see opportunity coming, Grab him from the front because when he passes, there's nothing to grab at the back. A very strange man. That's what Pastor Deboe told us. So I don't joke with opportunity. All of you know. When opportunity comes, I utilize it well. That even opportunity thanks me for the usage. Then it's okay. Lawyer Maura, we released him that last Sunday into his own ministry. Before that day, he came to the church. He followed me upstairs. We climbed, we climbed, we climbed. We got to the fifth floor. Stood there and said, Apostle. Ah, ah. I said, why did you say ha, ha. Hey. He said, you are a Nigerian man. Oh, I said, thank you, sir. <laughs> he said, you want to finish using this place completely. I said, sir, I am only still doing the answer with this one. He has, I will use the place, the land will thank me for showing up. I said, the one God has given to us. I will use the land. Even you, when you enter, say, ah, bah. Eh, this can come out of this land. That's the way it should be. Face your destiny. Use your opportunity well. See, see. Many of you have land that they give you that is that lying fellow. Hey, Mumu. And you're not saying somebody's attacking you. Go to that land and cultivate it. Do something on the land. Build on the land. Put a shop there. Put something there. Let people rent the land and do something there. And you allow it. Somebody says, We want to rent it. Say, No, 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 no. I don't want to rent it. And when I have money, I'll come and build. When will that be? Start something on the place. Start adding value. One, see, I began to discover the power of 10,000. Before 10,000 shillings, ah, let's go to carnival. Let's go and eat some animal. And you settle down, you devour 10,000. I discovered that 10,000 can buy many bags of cement. Many. A bag of cement is 50, 560 shillings. How many 10,000? How many 560 is inside 10,000? Imagine the bag of cement. A lorry or stone is 13,000. Some of you will sit down and you go to a restaurant and you eat 15,000 worth of it. You have eaten a lorry or stone. <laughs> you sit down, you are eating stone. A, very, a lorry or stone. Some people go to a pub and they will dance overnight and, and spend 30,000. They have eaten like that, three lorries or two lorries of stone. And they are dancing, eating lorries of stone. 27,000 is what they sell gravel. And you spend 30,000 in a pub overnight. Huh? You have eaten one lorry of gravel. 
foolish man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Prepare. When your enemy is attacking you, that is the best time to prepare. The Bible says in Exodus 1, verse 7 and 8. Project it for me. Exodus chapter 1, verse 7 and verse 8. Very quickly, very quickly. 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and works exceeding mighty. Verse number 8. It says, Now there arose a new king over Egypt, which knew not uh, Joseph. Verse number 9. It says, And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel, uh, can you remove that base? There's something you put on the base that I cannot read the Bible from the screen. You are putting something. There are some marks on the base. Remove it so I can read the Bible. Would you read? Thank you. Mightier than we. The next verse, verse number 10. It says, now go straight to verse number 12. Go straight to verse number 12. The said, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. The more they afflicted you, you should be growing. Affliction should fertilize you to grow. I don't fear affliction, sir. I don't, you insult me tomorrow, it doesn't move me. You say nonsense. I know I can handle you. It does not move me anywhere. You open your mouth, talk, 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 talk. when I look at you, when I calculate you, you don't deserve an answer. Just leave me alone. Keep talking. The more you attack me, the more I'm blessed. Are you hearing me, somebody? The best answer you can give to enemies, prepare for your time and chance. To multiply, to grow, to explode. Be preparing yourself so that the day you will erupt, when your enemy sees you, they will be ashamed. They will not want to be part of your success story. <laughs> You know, because in fact, we loved him. We used to know him. <laughs> even you, you'll be looking at them. Eh, you love me. Mm. When you will say, no, mm. fear will grip them. Gases will gush out of their buttocks because they didn't love you. <laughs> you, you. You will now say, yes, they were very loving neighbors. They'll be trembling when they're saying it is because they know they were never loving. Are you understanding me? Eh. Prepare. Prepare for it. Prepare for your time and your chance. Joseph kept on preparing himself. Kept on preparing himself until one day the success story unfolded. Hallelujah. Number eight. The eighth answer is the best answer to your enemy. Number eight. Answer your enemies and haters by succeeding beyond their comprehension. Let your dreams come to pass. Answer number eight. The eighth answer is the best answer. The best answer you give to your enemy is succeed. Success has no part two. Succeed beyond their imagination. Succeed beyond their calculation. Succeed beyond everything that they think of you. Succeed beyond their imagination. When we did the first decade, and the first decade had problems and it failed, people came to come and mock us. They came around and they called the foreman. Eh? What happened? They called the builders and said, eh? what went wrong with the church? Eh? Eh? Where were? Where were Kujapa? As soon as I was looking at them. One man even came to harass us, and I spoke to him, and he even told us that government officials were going to come and attack me and arrest us. I looked at him in the eye, eyeball to eyeball, and I said to him, if I see any of them on the street, I will know it is you, and I will, you, that send them, and I will deal with you and them like the devils. We were looking at him. Yes, sir. I said it to him on Sunday. He came to harass me. And I made up my mind, by the grace of God, I will not be distracted. So I came to this place. And I gathered all the builders and I told them we are going to build. Now, things have happened the wrong way. But now, correct your errors and let us start building. They said, yes, sir. And I prayed for all of them and we started. Bam, bam, bam. When we are doing this next decade, some people came and they started and they got the form and said, ah, you can see the pastor is up. I said, look at this one. We are doing decade number two. We are going to decade seven on this side. Decade another seven here and you are saying, pastor is happy. We are doing the hazard, oh, Jerry. Just, they told me, I said, it's okay, it's okay. Leave it that way. We did the second one. We did, by the third one, people were visiting by themselves. They come and check. Ah, yes, yeah, sir. If one man said he dreamt that God told him to be coming to this, I said, you are welcome. <laughs> when you succeed, people start dreaming about you. Oh, positive dreams. The reason why they are dreaming bad dreams about you is because you are a failure. <laughs> That's why they dreamt that the serpent was pursuing you. <laughs> a snake came to your house. So they, saw, they saw a demon that was having horns. When you succeed, they only see money entering your house. <laughs> it's that an aircraft and on top of your house. I'm telling you, dreams change when you succeed. Slap your enemy with success. You did not hear me. Slap your enemy with success. 
the best answer you can give to any enemy is succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, I read my Bible and I saw that when Joseph succeeded, that was the greatest answer he could give to his brothers. The Bible says that his brothers came to beg for food in Israel. They came to in Egypt. They came with their money. They lined up and they bowed without anybody commanding them to bow. They bowed but they said success makes people bow. Your enemy bow on their own. On their own by themselves. Question. Did Joseph tell them to bow? Muse, let us read the Bible. We read it too. Did Joseph say, oh yeah, on your mat? Said, bow to me first. You have to bow. They bowed. In fact, they lined up according to their height and their age. And they bowed. Joseph looked at them. In fact, when Joseph looked at them, he was trying to identify them. They bowed again. Over five was worrying them. They bowed themselves to the art. They were lying flat because they needed food, sir. Every time they bowed, Joseph remembered his dreams. He said, what? So my dream had finally come to pass. Excuse me, sir. The best lap you can give to your enemy is you succeed. If you remain a failure, if I said so, it's an idiot. I told you. Yeah, I knew. Uh -uh. How do they say I know in Kiswahili? Huh? In my word, Jua. Mimi. Say it clearly. Nili Jua. I knew it was going to fail before. I, I have jewed him. Nili Jua. They will click on you. Jua. Jua. They, they finish you. But succeed. Try. Succeed. Success is the best answer you can give to your enemies. Succeed. Stop ruminating on your failure. Stop rehearsing failure. What are you sitting in the pool of failure for? Stop sitting down and licking your wounds. Leave the wound alone to be healed. Move forward and succeed, sir. Do something with your life. Stop complaining. Eh, eh, they hate me. They hate me. That neighbor, he looked at me with bad eye. Look at me bad eye. Better one pass and even poured water on me. It's because you don't have a car. Buy your car. <laughs> they even drove and put, put dust on my face. Look at Okay, relax. Go and succeed. When you succeed, you silence insults. I provoke you today. Make success your watchword. Make up your mind you will succeed in all that you do. I challenge you today. Stop crying. Stop weeping. Stop complaining. This person did that. That person did that. He will always do such. Go and succeed. When you succeed, you silence your enemies. There is nothing like as sweet as success. When you succeed, everybody, including idiots, know this one is succeeding. Mumus, you know. Relax. What do I tell you to do? Go and succeed. Answer those who hate you by succeeding. The Bible says, Joseph said, I want you guys in prison. They said, it's okay by us. They enter prison. Joseph said, in fact, they give them back their money. Fear enter them. <laughs> when you succeed, you don't need the money anymore. He gave them back their money twice. They go back to jail. When they saw their money in the bag, they were afraid. Oh, fear came. Joseph has succeeded. And finally, Joseph said, bring your brothers. Your brother. They were arguing. Finally, they brought the brothers. When you succeed, you give instruction to your enemy and they will obey you. You command them to obey. Joseph told them, don't see my face again until you bring your brother. They said, yes, sir. When hunger wired them, they told their father, we can't go to see the man. Why? Because he said, we must bring our brother. That's why hunger is killing us. They persuaded their father to bring his brother. The Bible says to us, when they came with the boy, Joseph said, you will eat. They didn't say no. When you succeed, people don't say no to you. Sir. They sat down and ate. Joseph sent them away. Put up in the other guy's bag. Arrested them again. They, in fact, Judas submitted himself for arrest. May God cause you to succeed. Sir. The Bible says to us, it got to a level. Joseph now said, I am Joseph. The Bible said they expected the ground to open up. <laughs> I succeed. When you succeed, success can harass your enemy. Success can subject your enemy to humiliation, sir. The best answer you give to your enemy is succeed. Stop fighting the enemy. Stop talking. Stop doing drag up and down. Face your destiny and succeed. If you have not succeeded, you have no answer. Success is the best answer, sir. Success is the best answer. Hannah was being harassed by Penina. A beautiful for nothing. Empty stomach. Beautiful for nothing. Empty stomach. When others are doing praise and worship, 
and they are singing and they are clapping. Then Penina will be singing. So that Hannah can cry in the church while the service is on. Penina will be having her own personal praise and worship. Pitiful for nothing. Empty stomach. Pitiful for nothing. Empty stomach. Hannah knew that she was abusing her. And people are singing, then sings, my soul, beautiful for nothing, empty stomach. And Hannah began to cry. They thought it was the Holy Ghost making her cry. It was insult. Making her cry. Then she decided she was going to settle down in church and sort the matter out. She prayed. And her son came. The name of the son is Samuel. That son was one among one million. Samuel. And you give me the names of Penina's children. We don't know. They only told her Penina had five or six children. We don't know their names. Only Samuel's name was mentioned in the Bible. His name overshadowed all the other children because he was a success story. The Bible says God confides in him. God talks to him heart to heart, mouth to mouth. Even God whispers to him. Samuel, Samuel. Eh. Him and God, they talk. But Penina's children don't even know where, where God is. Are you understanding me? Succeed! The Bible says Samuel, at the tender age, at the age of 12, 13, 14, when he's walking on the street, elders begin to tremble. Elders are shaking. Say, hey, the prophet has come. Ooh, 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 ooh. They are shaking. When you succeed, success will silence your enemies. Stop fighting your enemy and planning how to insult him and now throw egg in front of his door. Bam! So the place can be ugly. Then you throw egg and some ugali. <laughs> in America, they throw egg. Maybe in Kenya, they throw ugali. So you wake up and you meet some heap of rotting ugali in front of your door. <laughs> Just to make you understand that you have some enemies in the area. Excuse me, sir. Leave them alone. Pack the thing. So there was a certain woman. She said, the people. It's another woman hated that so badly. The woman used to throw um, poo poo to her door. They would put the poo poo in a nylon bag and throw it to her door. So she would pack the poo poo and pour it to the flower. To the, uh, she had vegetable garden. She would pour it there. Whenever she wakes up, she knows they will pour poo poo. She would open the door, sweep it, wash her door, pack it into the place. So after a while, the woman that was dropping poo poo in front of her door became sick. And they said she needed a certain aloe vera to be healed. And that lady planted the aloe vera and was using her poo poo to grow it. So when she had, she went to collect the aloe vera and came to give her to be eaten. So well, say sorry. No, they said you need the aloe vera, have it, and give her. And then she asked her, How did you get it? She said, I used your poo poo to grow it. The one you used to throw at my door, eh, that's what I used. She was ashamed of herself. Are you hearing me, somebody? Eh, succeed. Succeed. When you succeed, you silence your enemy. Success is a great, the greatest silencer. It makes an enemy become your friend. It makes an enemy connect to you. It makes the enemy love you. It makes the enemy begin to defend you. It makes the enemy begin to fear you. They began to fear Joseph for the rest of their life. When they, the Bible says, when they saw all that God had done in Egypt before they came, ah, ah, they were afraid of him. They now went to their father and they told their father, Joseph is alive. The prophets have fainted. The Bible says when he saw the wagon, his spirit woke up. Success is a revival. It can revive anybody who wants to die. Jacob wanted to die. But when he saw the wagon that he sent, he opened one eye and said, eh, is that wagon? I've not entered wagon before. Praise God. Woke up and said, I'm not dying. Let me enter wagon first before I die. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When he saw the wagon that Joseph sent to pick him up, he refused to die. Say, why should I die? See wagon. I beg, I'm not dying again. And, he, and Jacob, you think what I'm saying is, is a game? It's true. It's in the Bible here. Yeah? <laughs> Hallelujah. Genesis 45. Verse 24. It's there in the Bible. Success can revive anybody who wants to die. Succeed, sir. I beg you, succeed. Make up your mind you are going to be a success. Verse 24, are you there? So he sent his brethren away, and they departed. And he said unto them, See that ye fail not out, fall not out by the way. Don't fight on the way, because you guys are fighters. You can go and beat yourself up. That's what Joseph, Joseph was not giving them instruction. Uh, don't fight on the way. Don't fall out on the way. The next verse, verse 25, that says, And they went up out of Egypt, and came into the land of Canaan, unto Jacob their father. Verse 26, And told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. And he is governor. He has succeeded. He is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted. He had stroke. 
but he believed them not. His heart failed. He had heart failure. <clears throat> he didn't believe them. His heart failed. His heart was no longer beating kush, kush. He had been um, then stopped for a long time. He became sick. He had heart attack. The next verse. The Bible says, And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagon, which Joseph sent to carry him, his spirit revived. You see your Bible there. When he saw success, wagon, he had been riding camel for 100 years plus. He finally saw wagon. He advised himself, I never rode wagon before. Let me enter wagon first. Death, wait, 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 wait a bit. I see wagon. His spirit revived. And the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Revival took place. Because of success. The next verse. The Bible says in verse 8, And Israel said, Remember it was Jacob when he fainted. He became Israel when he revived. <laughs> and Israel said, Enough is enough. I will go and see my son since he's yet alive. I will go and see him before I die. I'm not dying now. Death. Give me a few more minutes. You know, he lived for close to 40 something extra years. Okay, 17 extra years. He still told death, Wait! I'm not going anywhere. He had already had a heart attack. His heart was shutting down. But he used one remaining eye to see the wagon. Hey, see the wagon. He said, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Try. Wait. He revived. Jesus Christ. It is good to succeed. If you succeed, you will stop some people from dying. Anyway, people are dying because you have not succeeded. The reason why your uncle is ready to die is because he believes that you are going to succeed, but you refuse to succeed. So your uncle wants to die now. Your father wants to kick the bucket. So that's it. <laughs> when I was young, I was asking people, why do you guys say somebody have kicked the pocket when the person died? The pocket was there and you go and kick it. Bam. <laughs> Your father wants to kick the pocket. Why? Because you refuse to succeed. The best answer you can give to your enemy is succeed. Stop telling stories. Don't backbite. Stop fighting. Stop trying to look for an answer to give your enemy. The best answer is what? Success. Lift up your hands and say, I will succeed. I can't hear your voice. Talk it well. Talk it well. Hala it well, hala it well. Say, I will succeed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen, success cannot be exchanged for anything. Success speaks louder than voice. Success speaks louder than words. Success is more expensive than money. When you succeed, it speaks better English. See, success speaks louder Kiswahili. The Kiswahili is so smooth. When it is said in the language of success, you must succeed. Make up your mind. No matter the attack you are passing through, it must not stop you from succeeding. No matter what people are saying about you, it must not stop you from making progress. Begin to make progress. Begin to advance. Begin to make progress. Begin to advance. It does not matter your size now. Succeed first. Succeed first. It does not matter what you are passing through. Your shoes are now very old. Succeed first. A lot be wearing the shoe like that. It looks like you know. The shoe is not looking like a keno that is leaking. It's okay. Manage it and succeed. Are you hearing me? They've collected your coat of many colors. You are coatless. You are jacketless. The other time again, you bought another one. The wife of Potiphar collected it again as an evidence to jail you. Make sure you succeed. Excuse me, sir. Imagine when Joseph succeeded. How would the wife of Potiphar feel? Answer the question. Okay, wait, wait. Let us arrange it very well. Imagine you are the wife of Potiphar. And you are attacking Joseph, and Joseph finally succeeds. How will you feel? Now answer the question. All the ladies here, imagine you are the wife of Potiphar. Imagine it. Just put yourself in the shoe. You are the one doing all like this for Joseph. Joseph, Bobo. <laughs> Joseph. And Joseph refused. And you finally sent him to jail. Yes, it was Potiphar's wife that sent Joseph to jail. Let's get it straight. And finally, you had in the news, ladies and gentlemen, breaking news. The king hand over in Egypt. Yeah. The king hand over. And then they showed where the king removed his ring and put it in another man's. And when you check the face well, you see Bobo. <laughs> no, no. You, it was not Joseph. In fact, you pause the computer, your TV, 
to enlarge the face. <laughs> you don't know what we do now. You pause the thing and you now spread the face. It was the same Joseph with one thorough in his thinking. Yeah? Diabetes will catch you immediately. High blood pressure will follow. Hypertension will catch you. Low blood pressure will not take over from the other side. <laughs> and remember, your husband is the chief security officer. Your husband is the one that will be carrying his briefcase and following him. <laughs> and he was the one who jailed him. Yes, now. Potiphar was the chief security officer. CSO. Minister of Defense. He's the one that will be following him anywhere he goes. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? How would you feel? Success is the best lap you can slap your enemy with. And not, I'm not going to, your own success, you will succeed. Make up your mind you will succeed. Don't allow anything you pass through to lead success from your life. Don't allow it to become a story told around you that we knew that he was not going to succeed. We said so. We used to see him do grab gra up and down. Hey, just a smoke. Succeed, sir. Oh my God. Listen carefully. See, the reason why they are attacking you is because of what God has put inside you. Nobody knows your potential. It is only God that does. People can only see your credential. Turn your potential to your credentials. Become somebody great. They told you you not succeed. Say thank you. And then go ahead and succeed. Let their words be a fertilizer to your destiny. They, 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 they put roadblock and say, no way. And they hindered you. Go down. Maybe you are somewhere. Grow up from there and become very tall. Are you hearing me somewhere? Oh, glory to Jesus Christ. Don't allow anything to hold you or stop you in the name of Jesus. I want to stop preaching here so that you can pray. You know, order the anointing to follow you to go and be succeeded in hostile region. To go and succeed in hostile areas where men do not like you, where everybody is attacking you, where everybody is wondering what is wrong with this one. Man, you get away from here. You must go and succeed there. Are you ready now? Stand to your feet. I want you to pray, oh God of success, and anoint me, empower me to succeed in the presence of my enemies. Anoint me to succeed in the presence of my enemies. Anoint me to succeed in the presence of my enemies. Anoint me now. Somebody fire prayer. Wherever you are, I must succeed. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Lift up your hands and say, Father, anoint me. Empower me to succeed in the presence of my enemies. In my place of work, anoint me to succeed in the presence of my enemies. Clap your hands and fire prayer wherever you are. I refuse to be a failure. Yes, no matter what they said concerning me, yes, I refuse to fail. Amen. I will succeed. Yes, sir. In the presence of my enemies, yes, I will succeed yes, in the presence of my enemies. Amen. I don't care what they talked about me. Yes, I don't care about their attacks anymore. Yes, I focus on my success. Amen. I focus on my success. Yes, I am going ahead yes, to succeed. Amen. I will answer them back yes, with my success. Amen. I will answer them back Amen. with my success. Yes, Clap your hands and fire the prayer. I will make it. I will make it. I will make it. I will make it by the power of the Holy Ghost. I will succeed in the presence of my enemy. I will succeed in the presence of my enemies. What's the Gadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadagadag
the success of this church, fertilize the success of this ministry, fertilize it, fertilize it, fertilize it, fertilize it, fertilize it, my success in the name of Jesus. Oh, look at that, I'm not a dosit, I'm not a dosit, Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lift up your right and say, even though, even though I walk through, I walk through the, valley the valley of the shadow of death, the shadow of death I, will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. I will, fear no evil. I will, succeed. I will succeed. In the name of Jesus in Christ. The name of Jesus I come Christ. out of the valley. I come out of the valley. Of the shadow of death. The shadow of death. And I succeed. I will succeed. Clap your hands and fire that prayer. Yes, I come sir. out of that valley. I come out of the valley of the shadow of death. I come out. Out of the valley of the shadow of death. I come out of the valley of the shadow of death. I come out. I come out of the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. I shall fear no evil. I enter my next level. I enter my next chapter. In the name of Jesus, was it a pandalet? My yakalotalet, Ekanadagar, Oriakanagar, Masoka Lagadagar, Isha Lagadagar, was a Galagamagano city, Masoka Labragadusha, Oriakanagar, Isa Lagar, Oriakanagar, Ekanaka, Oriakanagar, Isa Lagadagar, Isa Lagadagar, Oriakanagar, Ekanagar. Was it going to be I succeed. I succeed. I succeed. I succeed. In Katoshi Prasata. Thank you. Lift up your hands. Let the anointing to succeed rest upon you. Never you stop praying for the rest of your life. No matter who is attacking you. It doesn't matter. Lift up your hands. I release the anointing. For you to succeed everywhere. For you to slap your enemy with success. There's no need to hit your enemy with blow. Your blow may be junior to him. He may have prepared himself to deal with you. So go ahead and succeed. When you succeed, that is a bigger blow, a better blow to give your enemy. I release the anointing upon your life now. Take power in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the power of God rest upon you. To succeed this week. To succeed throughout this month. To succeed November and December. To succeed in 2020. Anywhere they've looked down on you. And they believe that you will never be anybody. Or that you will never amount to anything. Receive power to succeed. Receive power to succeed. I release the power upon you right now. Succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. All those who are waiting for you to fail. They will wait for a long time. Time. And when they see you, you will ask them, why seek you the living among the dead? I am no more among the dead. My story has changed. I have succeeded as you can see. Receive the power to succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. From today, you no longer answer your enemies verbally. Your success will speak for you. Your breakthrough will speak for you. Your lifting will speak for you. Your progress will speak for you. Your promotion will speak for you. Your prosperity will speak for you. The louder your amen, the more you prosper. The louder your amen, the more you prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy will not catch you with sickness. Disease will not attack you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release success upon you. I release grace to succeed upon you. Everything you 
touch will yield success. Yeah. Everywhere you enter, you succeed. Yeah. Everywhere you turn, you succeed. Yeah. Everywhere you go, you succeed. Yeah. I see you succeeding in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I command the rain of success upon you. Somebody shout out, receive, receive, receive. Receive the power to succeed. In the name of Jesus. Every evil revelation they've had about you, I cancel it. Oh, you didn't hear me. I repeat, every evil revelation they've had about you, revelation of failure, revelation that you will die, revelation that you'll be sick, every evil vision, I cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And I release powerful revelation, Amen. revelation of breakthroughs, Amen. revelation of explosion, Amen. revelation of expansion, revelation of growth upon you now, revelation of success in every ramification of it. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. From today, nobody will look down on you. All those who look down on you, they will regret it. All those who belittled you shall belittle. Be very small compared to how God will raise you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, put Amen. your hands together. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Take your seats. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Nobody must belittle you. All right, let's get our offerings and give our offerings to God. Then we close the service this afternoon. The Lord bless all those who have joined us online from different parts of the world. Stephen Muchina said, Amen. Watching from industrial area. Kelvin Nyaga watched us from, uh, where's the name of that place? Naivasha. Karamola Sandra, what should, that should be Nigeria. Lord bless you. Maureen Mumbua, watching us from somewhere in Nairobi here. Tom Malevi is watching us from Uganda, right? Moses Olajide watched us from Kaduna, Nigeria. Timothy Oludari Ogini was watching us from Lagos, Nigeria. Richard Walekom Olafe watched us from South Africa. The Lord bless everyone who joined us from different countries. The Lord bless you mightily here in the name of Jesus Christ. Shai, see you at the port of success. Am I talking to the right set of people? See you where? At the port of something. We'll meet there. Uh, I'll see you when we get there. We'll get there together. Are you following me? In the name of Jesus Christ. We'll meet at the port of success. Stop crying. There's nothing to cry for. Leave them alone. The enemy have increased. Leave them. When you succeed, they will bow. They will bow. On, they will be flat on the floor. They will be licking dust. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right. Get out your offerings. Let's give our offering. Use the Empresa Pay Bill 821430. If you have yours physically, you can bring it out. The offering baskets are here. Give your offering with joy. With joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Give your offering with joy. I release power on your offering. I decree everything you give will add value to the kingdom of God. You are blessed terribly. Overwhelmingly blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, you swim in more than enough for the rest of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. You can come, give your offering. Give your offering, dollars, pounds, euro, Kenyan shillings, everything. Hallelujah. Use the Empresa Pay Bill. Use the uh, SendWave app. For those outside Africa, you can use the SendWave app to get to us. Not just that. Um, if you have your card, raise it up. They bring the POS machine to you. Put in your card. That settles the matter. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it is blessings on you. All those paying their tithes, may the Almighty God honor you and bless you tremendously in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and succeed. Was that not what I taught you today? Go ahead and do what? Succeed. Stop crying about the enemy. Leave the guy alone. When you succeed, he will bow. When you succeed, he will come down. You will relax. Aye. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Success is the greatest humiliator. You can humiliate an enemy, sir. They were now begging. When their father died, they begged. They said, ah, please don't kill us. Joseph said, I will feed you and your children. Don't worry yourself. One journey you eat, sir. I will feed you and generation coming after you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Succeed so you can feed your enemy well. 
you can give them balanced diet. Not that when you give them food, they are thinking it's poisonous because there's a tumor sukuma wiki inside. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> All right. I want us to close this service. Receive favor. The favor to succeed beyond the plan of your enemy. Receive right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I rejoice with you ahead because you surely succeed. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. All right, we'll share the grace now and then we'll go to the building. Go to that building. Then after that, I'll sit for like an hour to attend to anybody that needed to see me for any counsel so I can drive out. I have not been to the, my house for the past two days. I've been here. Bless you. Can we share the grace and fellowship? Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. All right. In the evening, we shall have anointing service. I'll be anointing everybody with.